Okay, this talk is about quantifiers. We already seen propositions in logic, and propositions allows us to talk about things as they are. But what if there are too many objects to talk about? We can't talk about each object by naming each, and when you can't name them, you have to use quantifiers. So let's look at some examples. So in first, this is a lecture on first order logic using quantifiers. We'll get into higher or order logics later on. So what are quantifiers? In English, all, some, few, many, none, not all are examples of quantifiers. Some students are boys. Some students are girls. Not all students are boys. No boy is a girl. Many boys are students. There is a boy. They are all examples of quantifiers because notice that there is no name. We haven't named anybody, but we given some properties of people who are different kinds of students. And there's no count also. There's no count. Also. Just say some or all. Okay. How about how many does some stand for? Many. What does many mean? Few mean. Okay. So from mathematical point of view, many and few are not numerical numbers. They are not quantifiable. They just mean some. Many people are absent. Few people are absent. How many is that? What percentage? Okay. So from logical point of view, we still don't know. And in English, we have a better idea. But even English can be ambiguous. When you say many people are absent, how many people are absent? It's not clear. So let's look at the notation before we get into more details. So first of all, constants already have a name like John, Anu. If people have names, we use names. Say one, two, three. Those are names. And then if you don't have a name, you have a variable x, y, z. We use variables. So x is not really an object; it is a pointer to an object. So x John can x can be John. X could be any person. And secondly, we need to talk about a quantifier. So a upside down a is all, and upside down e is exists. Why are these used? Because before computers, we didn't have enough fonts, so they just reused the a and the e and placed it upside down, the typesetter, and it became all and there exists. So the way you write it is, uh, for all x, x is a boy, boy x. That means, uh, and x doesn't matter the variable name. It could use x, y, z, any variable name. And similarly, there exists a y, such that y is a boy. That means there is somebody who is a boy. In this case, you know for sure there is somebody who is a boy. But in this case, for all x, uh, a, a, if there's any x, it's a boy. There can be. It could be empty set also. It doesn't doesn't matter how many people are there. So there are like four Aristotelian forms. This is like a really old logic logician from Greek time. He was a student of Plato and a teacher of Alexander the Great in 300 BC. So first one is uh, there are four only four different things that he could write with for all and there exists. Uh, one is all P R Q. You write for all x, px implies qx. Some p are q, right? There is a x such that some px and qx. No p are q, you write like this. For all px, is implies px implies not a qx. And some p are not q. That means there is a px and x is a px and not a qx. We'll see how to use this later on. So the typical examples you see in logic books are uh, for all x mortal x mortal means n cannot die that first sentence says that every every person x whatever they set x so in this case when you say for all x you already have some x in mind in the sense uh, some set of all the people or all the animals or whatever your object set is universes so that means every person will eventually die and there exists means there is a, a person who is mortal and then you can say more complete like for all x if x is human then x is mortal and there is a x such that x is human and x is not mortal not mortal the same as immortal never die and similarly we have similarly we have examples so boy john john is a boy so john john is a constant it's not a variable and john is a property of being a boy and for all x, boy x. That means everyone is a boy. And there is somebody who is a boy. It is not the case everyone is a boy. Not everyone is a boy. 
there exists it is not a case there exists somebody and x is a boy that means there are no boys and consider next one for all x x is not a boy and there is somebody and somebody is not a boy and look at this one for all x boy x or girl x everyone is a boy or a girl and compare it to the last one for all x boy x or for all x girl x this is different 8 and 9 are different everyone is a boy or everyone is a girl so we already looked at john a name constant so john is a name of a constant it's called a constant that means it's pointing to somebody and when the objects are really important we give it names otherwise we just use variables it's, so everybody has a name but there are too many people we just use uh, variables so there is a boy named john john is a boy there are many ways to write it there exists x boy x and x equal to john this is the way we write in logic and this assumes that there is an equality operator and sometimes there is no equality operator but we added the equality operator to write something like this and then we, we want to talk about two objects so what we need is equal to and not equal to not means the same as Anu there's a there's a person called Anu and it's not equal to there's a person called Banu and there's a person called Anu is equal to Anuradha that means they're two different people and Anu is same as Anuradha so let's look at more complicated examples we have a set of people relation between people logical connectors from propositional logic and or implies not and quantifies for all and there exists so we can write things like this there is somebody there is X likes Jim X that means Jim likes someone and we don't know we haven't named the X and this is not the same as the next one which says there is X such that X likes Jim that means there is somebody who likes Jim we don't know who that is and for all X likes X Jim that means everyone likes Jim so and next is we can write something more complicated you can try this at home some students are boys some students are girls not all students are boys and all students are not uh, all boys are not students no boy is a girl some boys are students some students have jobs every student is a boy or a girl okay you can write it using quantifiers and properties let's see get into uh, I will skip reading all this out because you can try them at home and examples of uh, more examples of quantifiers John likes Kate you say likes John and Kate so there's a relation between two objects and John and Kate are related by the operator like and it's different from Kate likes John they're two different operations so the it's a directed I uh, think so from John to Kate there's a like but from Kate to John we don't know it may or may not be like John likes only likes Kate how do you say that so it says for all X if John likes X, X must be Kate, which is different from only John likes Kate. So that you write like this: for everyone who likes Kate, X, X must be John. And then you can also have co more complicated um, uh, relations between multiple objects. Uh, uh, Kate likes Larry, and John happens to be Larry's brother. That's how you write it using two with an and between the two and then we can have double quantifiers which gets things more complicated everybody loves someone how do you write that everybody so for all x every x there is a y such that x loves y so that means everyone loves someone which is different from someone loves everyone which is there is a person x who loves everyone every y x loves every y and how do you say john loves no one say so there does not exist it's not the case there exists a y that John loves y that means there's nobody who John loves and how do you say Jim loves only himself and then we need equality out here to say that for every y if Jim loves y then y will be Jim only and another example is God blesses those who pray to him how do you write that for all x if pray x prays to God then bless God x so let's look at some more examples is it true or false for all x x likes x is it true or not it's called a reflexive property that means if you like yourself and what about x likes y does it mean y likes x 
and if x likes y y likes z does it mean x likes z and figure it out okay same thing instead of likes you could be friend are you a friend are you a friend's friend is your friend's friend your friend you can think about that and let's look at more example john likes kate is it true that if john likes kate that there is somebody john likes yes that's true and if john likes kate is it the case that there is a x and there's a y such that x likes y yeah that's also the true the case and if john likes kate is it the case there is a x that x likes everyone no that's not the case and there's for all y x likes y that's also not the case okay so that's about quantifiers and you can say pretty much a lot of things but there'll be more complicated logics in the next lecture thank you